I'm Professor Scott Weaver and I'll be your instructor throughout the remainder of this course. I want to take a few minutes and talk to you about your assignments and the importance of thinking and planning ahead. Take for example your business person interview project. It's important to think ahead because you're going to have to have enough time to set up an interview with a person that is in a business that interests you. You need to you know, contact them and have enough time to set up that interview. Um, then you'll need to have enough time to complete the project and get it turned in by the end of week seven. Um, in that project, you will have a lot of freedom. I have some questions that are merely suggestions that you can use for the interview. However, it's important that you create and do this assignment in a way that benefits you the most. If you need any help with it, please reach out to me. My email is sweaver at tfc.edu. You can text me at 404-444-8768. I will do everything I can to help you do well on this assignment because it's important to me that you do well on the assignment for your grade sake and also to set you up for success for future classes at TFC and into your future uh, career in business. So, uh, your business person interview project due at the end of week seven, think ahead, plan ahead, you know, give yourself enough time to schedule that interview with that business person and complete your project. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your business plan assignment, which is also a very important assignment. It is located at the end of week two on your course page, as you'll notice. Now, in this um, uh, assignment, you'll notice it's on week two. However, it's not due until the end of week three. Now, <clears throat> there are times where you may need an extension on your assignments. I am more than willing to give that, especially to students that are responsible um, and you know need that extra time, genuinely need it. I will be more than glad to give you the time that you need. I don't want you to have to be worried about you know pressured with a deadline whenever you also have maybe a family or work or other school assignments. I want you to take the time to get the most out of this assignment. So if you need a little extra time, uh, just reach out to me and communicate. Communication is a very important part of business management and leadership. If you let me know, I will gladly work with you because I want you to get the most out of this assignment. Let's look at uh, the business plan template that you will be using first and then secondly, I'll come back to the business plan template with instructions and go over a little more detail. Because I respect your time, and for time's sake, I have these already pulled up. But what you will do, you will click on each one of these and download it. And this is what your business plan template will look like once you have downloaded that. Let's talk about this a little bit. This is the document that you'll use to complete this assignment. Uh, this is a template. Obviously, you'll put the name of your business and any subtitles as needed. This picture, uh, you can replace it with whatever picture represents your interest or your business the best, and then put your name here. The next page is a table of contents, um, and if you'll notice, each one of these has a page number associated with the section of the business plan. So what will happen, for example, let's say I'm getting ready to look at your value proposition. I'll click here and it takes me to page 7 of your value proposition. Obviously, whenever you populate this template with your own content, this page number is going to change. Perhaps it'll become page 8, 9, 10, whatever it may be. And so what you'll do when you put your own content in this template and you need to update these page numbers, simply come over here click to the right of the table of contents, click this drop down arrow, and then click update table once you've added your content, and it will update these page numbers, and they will coincide with each section of your business plan. Um, let's go over each one of these sections a little more in detail so you'll know what to expect and what to do. However, let's go to your business plan template with instructions, which I already have that pulled up. Um, again, this will be on week two of your business plan assignment, but it's not due until week three. <clears throat> um, this is the business plan template with more detailed instructions. Obviously, you have your cover page as we just looked at and went over, table of contents we've talked about. Now, let's talk about 
the sections of your business plan a little more in detail. The executive summary, and please remember this guys and ladies, the executive summary is the most important part of any business plan and in this assignment included. The executive summary is important because it's the first thing that a potential partner, investor, or customer may see. If you have grammatical errors, misspellings, um, if it doesn't capture their attention, chances are they're not going to look at the remainder of your business plan and you will not accomplish your goal with that. So an executive summary is the most important part of the business plan. Um, you know, you want to ask yourself, what is your purpose, who's your audience, and what do you want whenever you're writing the executive summary? Keep it short and brief. Do not write a long executive summary. You want it to be one page or less. Less if preferable. Less is more when it comes to an executive summary. But there are things that you do not want to leave out in your executive summary. For example, you want your mission statement to be uh, in your executive summary. You want a short, impactful mission statement that grabs a person's attention. You don't want a long paragraph for a mission statement. I think I have some videos in this course and there are plenty of videos available on YouTube and other areas uh, that describe what a good mission statement is. If you look up Amazon's old mission statement, it's a very short, powerful, and concise statement. Look up Google's mission statement and look up Apple's mission statement. They're very short, um, but they're attention grabbing and to the point. So. Your mission statement is going to be an important part of the executive summary, but keep it short. Uh, you also want to briefly describe the industry and your market conditions. And then the most important part of the executive summary will be your value proposition statement. Your value proposition is what makes you stand out among competitors in a crowded field. Your value proposition statement is what will convince me or an investor or a potential partner to do business with you. Why should we buy your product? Why should we utilize your service instead of your competitor's service or buy their product? Think about that and create a value proposition statement that convinces us to buy your product or use your service. It's what makes you stand out. It's what differentiates you. It's like driving down a road and seeing just a, a sea of white cows. They all look the same, but then imagine all of a sudden a purple cow in the midst of those white cows. That cow would stand out. It would grab your attention. That's what your value proposition statement should do. It should grab a reader's attention and convince us to buy from you or use your service service instead of your competitors. You'll find some examples of some business plans uh, at the Small Business Association's website. The link is there in your business plan template with the instructions. Uh, however, use the template that we have on your course page whenever you're creating your business plan. So the executive summary is the most important part. You need a mission statement, a brief description of your business, industry, and the market conditions, but especially your value proposition. Um, after the executive summary, you will have your company uh, description and an overview. This is where you'll talk a little bit about your team members, uh, leadership, and their roles. Uh, describe you know, each team member and a little bit about their role. Um, you want to briefly describe your business if it's not self-explanatory. Uh, state your mission and your vision statement again. Um, you know what is going to make your product or service unique. Where is your business located? You'll want that in the description section. And then talk about what legal structure um, your business will be. S Corp, C Corp, uh, nonprofit, sole proprietorship, uh, LLC. What type of legal structure is your business going to be? And so that's will cover the, the company description um, uh, and your overview of your organization. So you have your executive summary, the description, and then the market analysis. Let's talk about the market analysis for just a second. Uh, the main thing here um, basically are four things I'll be looking for. Your barriers to entry, 
that is the level of difficulty that you will encounter when starting your business. For some people, the barrier, biggest barrier to entry may be large startup costs. For some, it may be uh, government regulations. But think about the barriers of entry for your business. But then most importantly, how you will overcome those barriers to entry. So, so identify your barriers to entry and tell me in this business plan how you plan to overcome those barriers. Uh, list briefly your competitors. Um, then your target market. Who are you targeting your product or service to? You want to identify your barriers to entry, your competitors, and your target market. And then last uh, but not least, you'll want to include a SWOT analysis in this market portion of your business plan. A SWOT analysis talks about your strengths, your weaknesses, the opportunities, and then threats and or challenges. This does not have to be a long drawn out document. It can just be something brief and to the point. You know, if you just want to list your top three you know, strengths, um, a couple of your weaknesses, you know, spend a little more time on your opportunities and talk about that, and then maybe any threat to your business or challenges, uh, and you know, just list those. Uh, on the market analysis section of your business plan. I have a link there that talks a little bit more in depth about a SWOT analysis, but it's self-explanatory. Your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. Just give it a little bit of thought and list those out. After the executive summary, after the description, and your market analysis, you'll talk a little bit about how you plan to market your product or business. Um, here you talk more specifically about your target market um, and how you plan to implement, uh, uh, you know, your your plan of marketing and like, you know how you plan to spend your advertising dollars. You know, where will the advertising dollars be spent? Um, and there again, you don't have anything incredibly detailed. Just answer those particular questions as short and detailed as possible, and you'll do well. So, following the market plan. We'll talk about the value proposition. We uh, emphasize the importance of that value proposition. This is next to the executive summary, which is actually part of the executive summary, a very, very important, if not the most important part of the plan. Why should we buy from you? Why should we use your service? What makes you stand out? Why are you different? Um, convince an investor, convince a partner, convince a customer why we should use you instead of your competitor. After the value proposition, um, you will move on to the financial analysis portion of your business plan. Um, guys and ladies, please hear this. I'm not super overly concerned about incredible details on the financial part because you will get some in-depth teaching in your business finance course in, in regarding business finance uh, much more detail you'll spend a lot more time in that course than in this course. This course is just a very uh, brief overview of that in this particular week. So very important. Guys, ladies, these are the two things that I'll be looking for in financial analysis. Number one, startup cost. Be realistic. Think it through. Research it. What is it going to cost you roughly to start up? So your startup cost, number one. Number two, operating cost. What is it going to cost you to operate your business? Uh, you can talk about monthly operation cost, um, quarterly or annually, whatever fits your business model the best. But again, to reiterate, the two most important things I look for here in this portion of your business plan, the financial analysis, are startup costs, number one. Be realistic. Um, research it and uh, list that well. Number two, operating cost. Startup cost and operating cost. List those two things and you'll do well on that section and you'll learn a lot more about business finance in the business finance course. So that ultimately is your business plan assignment, your executive summary, the brief description, market analysis, market plan, value proposition, important value proposition, um, and then the financial analysis. If I can do anything to help you with this assignment, 
not only do I want you to get a good grade, I want you to learn what it takes to start a business and or operate a business. I want you to be successful in this course, in your other courses at TFC, but most importantly, I want to be a very small part of setting you up for success in your career as a business person. If I can help in any way, please contact me. I'm Scott Weaver. My email is sweaver at tfc.edu. Text me at 404-444-8768. God bless you guys and ladies.